Hello and welcome to SL Techy Guy. You are watching an introduction to networking lesson. Networking is one of the most common things that we have, right? Not only in a corporate environment, but also at a home environment. Think about how many homes are connected to the internet today. And even though we may only have one computer that is connected to the internet, we are still part of a network. So in this video lesson, we are going to talk about what a network is. We are going to look at some of the different networking components that we can set up and in some cases we configure them. We are going to talk about what some of the different packet types are and what TCP IP is. We are also going to take a quick look at TCP IP addressing also. So there's a lot for us to cover. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of the most common questions is simply, what is a network? Well, a network can be defined as a way for us to connect two or more devices together with the ability to communicate with each other and potentially share resources. Well, now resources come in all different varieties, right? A simple resource could be a way for us to gain access to the internet. That's probably the most common thing that we use, especially in a home environment or a small office environment. If we are in an office environment or even a large corporate environment, then we are going to have access to different files, files that exist in different locations, on different servers, or on different workstations. We also have an ability for us to be able to connect to different print devices. So those are the resources that we potentially can share with one another. The most important thing is even we only have a single computer that connects out to the internet, we still have a network, right? Because that allows us to be able to connect to another device someplace out on the internet and be able to retrieve information or view information and be able to share those resources. When it comes to a network, there are some basic network components we need to be aware of. The very first one is called the network interface card, or usually we call it as a NIC card. The NIC card allows us to be able to connect to the network, basically. Without it, we are just a standalone computer, right? There is no way for us to be able to communicate with each other, so the NIC card allows us to communicate to the network. Now, NIC cards can vary in speeds, right? Anything from 10 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second to a gigabits per second or even 10 gigabits per second. Of course, the faster, the better. But you do want to try to make sure that all of your network cards are at least at the same rate as far as the speed goes, right? So we want to make sure that all of our network cards can run at least the same speed so that we get the traffic going smoothly throughout all of our devices. Now, network cards also can be wireless, right? And that allows our laptops and our tablet devices, which are portable devices, to communicate with our network as well. The next kind of device could be called a switch, or we call it as a hub. The difference is whether they have some intelligence built in. A switch can actually look at the traffic and over time it learns where everybody is and sends the packet straight to that particular port. When it comes to hubs, they don't have that ability. They don't learn where everybody is, so they just send the packet to everybody, even though it is only destined for one machine. Now, switches can also connect us to a router. A router helps us to forward packets between different networks. The most common use, especially in a home environment, is for us to be able to connect to the internet. Now, routers can also be wireless or a wired connection, right? The good thing about routers today is that there are so many different variations that we can pick the one that fits us the best. So, if you think about it today, organizations are different sizes. They have different budgets, but typically they all need a network to communicate with each other. The problem is they need different types of networks. However, networks are typically divided into one of two categories. The first category is called the peer-to-peer -peer network. A peer-to-peer -peer network has no actual dedicated server, okay? 
instead we have a number of workstations that are all connected together and they are all connected together for basically one reason to share things share files that may have on each individual workstation or the ability to share devices things like printers and connections to the internet peer to peer networks are designed to satisfy the networking needs of both our home networks as well as our small businesses those that maybe can't afford a dedicated server or don't have enough users to spending that kind of money now peer to peer networks are typically designed for up to 10 users the second category is server based in a server based network all data files are typically stored in one location on the server with a server based network the network server stores a list of the users who may use the network resources and usually holds all the resources as well all the connections to the print devices all the actual files and folders and we can use security to define who can actually access what files and folders and what can they do can they delete a file or can they just open it and read it now by having all of our data in one central location or one central portal we also have one location where we do all of our backups that's where all of our data is so that's where we need to backup in a peer to peer network we would actually have to backup the data on every single machine that had a file or folder that it was sharing with everybody else with server based well typically everything is in that one machine that server so we have one central location where everything is it makes it easier for backing up and also to recover at a later time now in order for us to be able to communicate with other computers that exist on our network or even to send something to a printer we are going to send packets and packets contain the actual data in it now packets basically come in three types the first type is called a unicast unicast packets are sent from host to host now think about a telephone conversation now i am not going to talk about three way calling process right just only a typical telephone conversation you pick up your phone you dial your number the phone on the other end rings the person picks it up they answer right well that's very similar to what happens with unicast in unicast we have one person that sending one that's going to receive now the second type of packet is called a multicast multicast is a special protocol that is used with ip multicast enables one single device primarily at least to be able to send out data but it is going to send it out to a set of hosts meaning multiple people or in some cases many people now anyone can actually join in it's kind of like a conference call right if you think about a conference call we have one person that is hosting right and everybody else dials into that conference and what they do is they hear the speaker talk the speaker's message isn't going to be broadcast anywhere it's just going to be heard by those on the conference call you can also think about radio or television where you have one location maybe it is a station and that station is broadcasting its information now but only those people that tune in to that station are the ones that are actually going to hear it now the third type of packet is called a broadcast and a broadcast is when one single device transmit a message and it's going to everybody everybody is going to receive it now the most important thing is it may be destined for everybody but it also may be destined for just one person now the broadcast once again is going to reach all hosts it could be on the subnet it could be on one subnet or it could be on all subnets it's really kind of up to how you are set up in your network so routers can actually block broadcast traffic right what that means is that if you are at home and all of a sudden you are sending broadcasts out well your home router is going to stop those from going out to the internet that way we don't have a bunch of broadcast that supposed to everybody going across the internet imagine how many people would be receiving those packets if it was sent across the internet now once again when it comes to broadcast these are going to be sent to everybody 
but they could only be directed for one person. Now one of the best things about this is we don't have to choose when we are actually using different applications or we are connecting to a printer or we are streaming data like audio and video the type of packet that we use is going to be chosen for us based upon the actual application.